In this lesson, we are going to learn extra written codes for a specific purpose is called library, the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor, so we can read it using Arduino. Then I'm going to show you how to take Everything action breathing. based on temperature. We can take action by Absorbing. turning on a buzzer or so something else. This course is based on SunFounder 3-in-1 Arduino kit sold on Amazon. Everything that you learn in this course is included in this kit. The course comes with tons of components and projects, all with instruction and video for smart car and other projects that you can use for school or home automation. You can purchase it from sunfounder.com. The kit also comes with full documentation, code download, learning projects with full explanation, wiring diagram and the code that you can download. The link to purchase the kit and documentation is below the video in the description. Welcome to Arduino course by Robojax. Now we are going to learn about Arduino libraries. Extra written codes for a specific purpose is called library. So the code that you might need to use repeatedly is library. For example, you need to use them for sensors, for motor control, or any other task that you need to use them repeatedly. They are called libraries. You can install library via Arduino IDE or you can download them as zip and then install them. Uh, or you can go through tools, manage and libraries. You can download and install it. And when you install it, the location would be documents, Arduino, libraries in that folder. Once we install a library today, I'm going to show you. We are going to use this temperature and relative humidity sensor, DHT. 11. For this, we need to install library, so we are going to learn how to install library and we are going to learn how to use it. So the specification for this is that it can measure from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius or 32 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit and it can measure humidity from 20 degrees, from 20% 20 relative humidity to 90% and the temperature accuracy is plus minus one degree Celsius and humidity accuracy is plus minus five. So this is very cheap and easy to use. There are other sensors that can go very high in terms of range and in terms of accuracy. The operating voltage of DHT11 is three to 5.5 volts. So this makes it very suitable for uh, programming with 3.3 volts or 5 volts, which we are going to use it. And it needs 0.5 micro milliampere to 1 ampere current. And when it's not measuring, when it's not measuring, it needs 100 microampere or 0.1 milliampere current. And here is the data sheet for DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. And here, the typical application, here they mention 5 kilo ohm. This could be also 1 kilo ohm to 10 kilo ohm. Connected via this point to DHT, pin 1, pin 2, pin 4. Pin 3 is not used. And this is microcontroller unit or your Arduino. Remember we talked about resistor with push button. This is called pull-up re resistor. So this is pulling the pin 2 up, keeping it always high, unless using microcontroller, you set it to low. I will provide you the link for this data sheet. Here is the wiring diagram. From the left, you bring one wire to this point where we will connect it to 5 volts. And the second pin will be connected to pin 2. The third pin is not connected. The fourth pin is connected to ground. And from the second pin also, you can connect a resistor 
which is from one kilom to ten kilom to positive but for beautification I put one wire here and then connect it to this point and here is the actual wiring I've connected it like that so the first wire from the right is connected to ground the second one is empty the third one one wire from here let me bend it so you can see it so blue is connected to pen 2 let me remove these two so you can see it from the first pen it's connected to this point where this is connected to 5 volts of Arduino from the second pen this wire is coming to this point where with a resistor it has been connected to 5 volts again this can be 1 kilo ohm up to 10 kilo ohm now let's install the Arduino library we click on tools manage libraries and here we type DHT11 and then press enter we see multiple libraries here and the one that says add a fruit click and select and install it wait for the installation to complete when it's installed you will see installed green here then close it and here when you come to documents Arduino libraries you will see DHT sensor library have been installed if I double click I will see the dht.h and dht.cpp so this is what we include in our code and if you want to install it manually you can also put unzipped file at the folder the valid folder in here to install your own zip that you have downloaded click on sketch include library and add .zip library from here when you click point to where you have saved your library and if this was the library just click and click open it will be installed so point it to where you have saved it now let's open the example that is coming with the library click on file examples scroll down until you see DHT sensor library and the second option it says DHT tester click and open this is the code In this line we are including the library DHT.h this is also another way to define a variable instead of typing the type like integer or something you just type define with this hash at the beginning and then type your value you don't put any equal sign or anything you just type the number and there is no semicolon like like this we don't have it and it will automatically know that this is integer and this value will be defined as integer if you put here for example a, a name let's say a book then this will be automatically string and a string will be uh, stored and if you put float the float will be stored so keep in mind this is one other way that we can define a variable and this line defines the DHT pen in this case DHT pen 2 have been defined find any other pens just change it this is called comment when you comment a line it becomes a comment so it says DHT 11 and as you can see DHT 22 is uncommented there is no comment so we will comment this out and uncomment or remove this so the library is ready for DHT the same way this library can work for DHT 21 as well you just need to select the right one an instance of the class and we create an object this can be different name that you have if you have a if you are connecting it to a heater we could say heater and do not touch this we are initializing the serial monitor and printing this text let's type here DHT 11 and then this line is initializing the sensor 
DHT dot begin. This must be inside the setup so the sensor is getting ready. Inside the loop we have two seconds delay so what it means is we are reading every two seconds and below this we have these special uh, functions that are being called here is we are uh, using float h so this is holding hum humidity to read humidity we type dht dot read humidity this reads the value and stores it in h to read the temperature in celsius we read the temperature dht read temperature store it in t to read the temperature in fahrenheit you use the same thing except we have inside it, it says true and by putting the true it tells the code to convert it to fahrenheit so we are getting fahrenheit and here we check f here we check here if there is an error for example is none none is a function within this library that returns none when there is a problem with wiring or the sensor so it says if with h or with t temperature or fahrenheit if there is problem or this means or problem with temperature or problem with fahrenheit then we print this and return nothing so this will print this error for it for us heat compute heat index you can read about heat in index uh, from the internet and see what you use it for uh, this is not of our concern and these are our text which prints the text humidity and then actual humidity and after that with percent and then temperature so this is the line which it prints the actual this t is holding temperature this h is holding uh, humidity and then we print fahrenheit and and this line is printing uh, heat index for celsius for fahrenheit and all ready now let's check the code if there is any error we will see it will compile it no issue i've selected by clicking on tools com port my com port is selected i've explained it in the second lesson or first lesson and then go to tools board avr boards and select uno which i uh, you can see the dot here i have selected it and then click to upload and upload it to Arduino board. Now the code is ready, let's open the serial monitor here. The reading has started it. It shows humidity temperature now the room is 22.3 and Fahrenheit and there is a heat index which we are not worried about and these are the two parameter temperature and humidity is the most important one and here this is my heat gun where it generates heat let me turn it on and you could see that this is heating up yeah now this will burn it so I have to be careful and then blow it from far away. So the temperature will increase now. So as you can see the temperature has increased. Thirty-eight degrees, thirty-nine degrees. I'm not gonna burn this, but this is hot enough. So as you can see, it went even up to fifty degrees Celsius, and look at the humidity, hundred oh Fahrenheit. So humidity is almost the same but Fahrenheit 123 degrees so this is how our temperature sensor can read now if you want to customize the code and just use portion of it for example if you don't want these lines for example if you don't want heat index simply 
delete. If you don't want humidity, simply delete it. This percent also will delete, or if you want, if you don't want Fahrenheit or Celsius, depending on which one you don't want, simply delete it. So this is actual number for humidity. This is in uh, temperature in Celsius, and that's in Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to demonstrate using action when the temperature reaches above certain value, below certain value, or if you want, you can do it within certain value to take action. We could take action to control a heater, control a cooler, or turn on a buzzer, or turn on an LED, or turn on a relay. In this example, for simplicity, I'm just connecting a buzzer to pin 3, but from the same pin 3, you can connect it to an you can connect it to a, to a relay or a different devices or a heater or something that you can control or turn on it or turn on and off something. Now we are taking action. I have defined here pin 3 as alarm pin. So we are turning on the pin 3 when the temperature reaches a certain value. Then inside the setup, I have done this line. I have defined using pen mode, the alarm pen as an output, so we can control the, that pen, which is pen 3, so we can send signal. Inside the setup, I've added this line and removed the rest, so we are printing this text and then temperature in uh, Celsius. If you want it in Fahrenheit, just change that to Fahrenheit and then put this F, so it will print proper unit for you. I prefer to work with Celsius. And here is the action part. T is holding the temperature in Celsius, and if you want, you can use Fahrenheit. And we say, if temperature is greater than 45, then do this, whatever is between these two curly parentheses. So we do this. What we do is, we say digital right, alarm pen high. So we are turning the pen high, which will be connected to LED or a buzzer. It will turn on. And what you can connect a relay. You can do whatever else you want. And this line is just printing it on a serial monitor, telling us that alarm is running. Else mean otherwise, otherwise mean the temperature is not greater than 45. Then we do just this. We say digital right, alarm pen low. So we are turning the alarm off or keeping it running off. If you want to change it when the temperature is below certain number, just change less than sign. We are using greater than because I can heat it up. Now let's check the code first. And then click upload. The previous lessons I forgot to remove this, but we have to remove it and remember that longer pin is positive. We are just adding this buzzer. The positive is to the right, I'm leaving it like this, and so I have holes here, going to connect the negative using this wire to the left one, to the fourth pin of the sensor because that's our ground, and then I'm going to connect this pin from the red from here to pin 3. Now let's open the serial monitor. As you can see, it shows our temperature at 20 degrees Celsius. Heat using my heat gun. And we are reading. The temperature is increasing. So I know, it, uh, I know it's absorbing. So as soon as it reached 45, it says alarm, and it is printing the temperature.
Now if I try to cool it down with my hand, so you see the temperature goes below 45 and it will turn off. So 44.8 and stop. 